Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today's the day. <laughs> what journey are we on? Oh my God. Um, you guys, this I, doesn't even fit in the screen. Okay, wait, hold on. There. All right. Hermes, baby. We're doing an unboxing. Yeah, best believe. Look at that. Oh, mm, 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 mm. bad, bad, bad Hermes, bad Hermes. Um, <clears throat> so subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, push that join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today, get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dickable, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday. You're all invited to partake in the live chats. Let me cue in my code chatters. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts, just my opinion. Everything's alleged. Hi, everybody. Welcome, darlings. Now, you know, listen, me and Hermes, it's always a journey, isn't it? Everything's a journey. Let me tell you. Hold on. So, you know, the journey is long. I also have my journey merch, by the way. Go check out... The Super Jacob, the journey merch. You best believe. It's like the horse is dead by the time you reach the end of that journey. Um, you can get my the journey merch at www.superdacob.com. Also available uh, on Amazon, uh, in some countries on Amazon, but worldwide at www.superdacob.com. Different colorways, t-shirts, shirts, hoodies, cropped tops, some amazing stuff. All right. So... Listen, as you know, my particular Hermes obsession is a special one. I'm, you know, I I love their crops. I love their horse riding gear. I, oh, I, you know, love some of their bracelets. Uh, and I do have, you know, a collection of their more whimsical pieces. I love their tarot cards, which I also own. I love their Hermes Sans fragrances. I've been by, you know, you can check out the video of the the history of my crop i got this over a decade ago uh way before youtube was even a thing so you can definitely check out the video of my story time how i got it and why i got it so i've been a client of hermes despite what a lot, a lot of people think since over a decade um and i was at a wedding uh, this last week and my flight got my flight home got cancelled so I had some extra time to spend in uh, the particular city I was in uh, and I found out that they had an Hermes boutique there now when I was in Australia for the world premiere of my movie Art Lovers Unite with Vivian Westwood at the uh, Melbourne Documentary Film Festival I I was going with with my friend Jesse from Jesse Style. By the way, check out Jesse's channel. You know, you want to know something about Hermes? You go to Jesse. Jesse Style. I'll I'll link her down below. Jesse's amazing. And since I do believe, since this video has an Hermes name on it, you're gonna be clicking on it. So I want you to check out Jesse's channel. Uh, she's awesome. And go subscribe to her and send her some love. So uh, I was, you know, Jesse took me to visit the Hermes boutiques in Melbourne. Um, the, the two Hermes boutiques that we went to, one in the center of town and one in Chatston shopping mall or chatty. And, um, and I was looking for a couple of pieces and they didn't have anything. It was really, really, really stock was terrible. I made a video on how terrible the stock was at Hermes also on my channel, how terrible the stock in Melbourne Hermes was. Now this particular Hermes, I was shocked. I actually came in for a pair of sneakers that I really wanted. They had them. Nobody else had them anywhere else I went to. Nobody had them. They had them, but not in my size. They had a wall full of Kellys and Birkins and Constances. They even had a shadow Birkin. There was a shadow Birkin standing like high up there on one of those pedestals. And I started talking to a sales associate there while well, I was introduced to a sales associate who was new, just started working at Hermes several months ago. And he is, it's a he, I rarely kind of deal with male sales associates. I'm better off with, with female ones, but he was very, very kind, very gentle Spanish, uh, originally. And, um, 
had that soft Spanish accent in his English. It was really, really, it was beautiful. It was a nice experience. He was really, really nice. He didn't know as much about Hermes as I did. So when I was kind of mentioning certain things, he would be like, oh, wow, I'm learning something from you. So it was it was a nice conversation we had. Um, and then when I saw the Shadow Birkin, I was like, oh, Shadow Birkin. He's like, oh, you know the Shadow Birkin? I was like, yes, I know the Shadow Birkin, but uh, he's like, yeah, but then, you know, that thing, it was a small one. It was like, I think a 25 or th- it was really tiny. It, it was a dark blue navy color. It, it looked like nothing. I really, not for me, but it was so cute. He's like, you know, he was being more honest than I think a more matured sales associate would have been because a, a sales associate that's been working there for several years would not have been as open as he was. So that was really cool. He's like, you know, this one, I cannot sell you. I'm like, don't worry, I don't want it. <laughs> He's like, no, because, you know, to sell this one, I have to talk to the store manager. And the store manager gets to decide who buys it. And he looked at it like it was like the holy grail. I was like, listen, it's way too small for me. I don't like the color. I'm not interested in it. Don't worry. Just because I know what the name of it is doesn't mean I want it. It's okay. He's like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, right. And then I turn around and and I see the first piece that I'm like... I want this. Um, and this is going to be fun. And then next to the shoes, I see another piece I want. And I'm like, oh, this. He's like, oh, yeah. What? Am-? I'm like, well, are you selling this? Am I allowed to touch it? Because <laughs> at this point, like, you know, you can't touch anything over there. So... Okay, so the first piece uh, is um, this. There's there's more in this bag, by the way. All right. So this is the first piece. And I love how he's just like, do you want everything wrapped up like in, in pouches? I was like, yeah, 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 give me the pouch. <laughs> give me the pouches. Now... It's so funny because the sneakers that I wanted that I didn't end up buying because it didn't have my size were in this material. And ah, don't hyperventilate, Trina. You guys, you're making too much out of this. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, I'm telling you, my Hermes journey is quite different from everybody else's. I really don't care for what most people care for at Hermes. I like my stuff at Hermes, okay? So this little piece to die for, for me personally. Obviously, nobody else cares for this. (laughs) Living for it. I got a ginormous bucket hat. This is the first piece. With the music print, uh, actually the music cotton inside. By music, I mean... It has all the celebration of music there, 80s music tapes, microphones, all sorts of stuff. And then we got the uh, silk uh, inlay. Now, they had this in the biggest size. I got a big head. So I, I was like, do you have 61? Which nobody makes. Nobody manufactures it. They're like, yeah, we have 61. This is the denim I wanted the sneakers in. So the sneakers are in this denim. They didn't have my size, but then they had the hat. Now, I have a lot of makeup on my forehead right now, so I'm not going to put the hat on because I don't want the makeup to transfer. But I did take a photo of me wearing the hat as I was uh, flying back home at at one of the many airports I was at. Now I'm going to show you uh, a photo of me wearing the hat at the airport. This is a hilarious photo because uh, of the people in the background. Now, you don't see the faces of the people. I protected their identities, but check out the photo. So there's a person sleeping behind me. On the th- <laughs> Anyway, this is me with my bucket hat, living my best anonymous life with a ponytail and my sunnies. I kid you not. I kid you not. I... Um, I bought this a couple of days ago and of course Styling Secrets says Brad Pitt wore it today at Coda. Really? You see Brad Pitt copies me. I can't with him. Brad Pitt, stop being so obsessed with me, will you? 
<laughs> anyway, since I bought it, now I've did this unboxing for you guys, but I mean, you know, it's just in the satchel. I've been wearing it every day. I'm obsessed with it. It is comfortable. It is amazing. It's just the right size. It's really hard for me to find the right size of hat for me. This thing makes me feel cozy, comfy, protected. It's understated. It doesn't have major logo. I mean, the only logo that it has is invisible, literally. It's a stitched H right here on one side of the hat. So like, it's literally, if you know, you know, otherwise you don't, right there. You, it's so minimal. Look at this thing. Like you can't even see it. Do you see, there. No, you can't really see it. There it is. It's like blue on blue. You, like, you know what I mean? Like if this was Chanel, it would have a double C covering the entire hat. Now, speaking of Chanel, um, if this hat was Chanel, it would cost $1,500. Uh, but this thing was under $400. Hermes. And it's made in France. Oh, yeah. Can we talk about that? Um, girl. It's made in France, baby. Comelita says, oh, wait. Where is his hand behind you? Oh, honey. Wouldn't you like to know? There you go. So it's made in France and it's a size 61. So there's that. And uh, you've seen me wear it in the photo. I can't wear it now. Too much makeup. I don't want to stain the hat. Uh, now, the second product, as I said, turned around. I see this and I'm like, oh, you have this in store? Great. Can I buy this or is it just a, a decoration piece? And I kid you not, he looks at me and he says, you want this? I was like, yes. <laughs> and here comes the second unboxing. <laughs> oh my God, this is so fun. I wanted this for many months. Um, it, this... You might think of oh, whatever. To me, it's amazing because it's going to be added to this collection of whimsical pieces from Hermes that I live for. Um, so he looks at me and says, you want this? I was like, if you're selling it, I'm buying. Um, and he's like, seriously? Okay. And he says, you guys, go watch my video, my story time, how I got this crop and the story behind it. I, I kid you not, I was having a deja vu. I thought it was like, oh my God, it's happening all over again. Because the story that goes behind this thing is hilarious. Same applies to this. So, so I'm like, I want this. He's like, oh, do you have a dog? And I'm like, no, this, would, this is going to be for me. And he's like, okay. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I love it. It is their Hermes orange frisbee. It's a dog frisbee. Um, look at that little logo in there. Oh my God, to die for. And this one is made in France. Um, you can see the logo right there. Oh, there you go. There you go. You can see it. A little made in France moment. And the logo in the center. The Frisbee. Yes, Deco, welcome to the pop community. I don't know what the difference is between dog and human Frisbees. This thing is so amazing and it is such a novelty piece. This is what I love Hermes for. This is what this is the stuff I love to buy from Hermes. My collection is growing, but here's the twist. Frisbee, sure but not in the fashion bunker. We, we're not gonna be throwing this thing around in the fashion bunker, honey, no. This beautiful little piece of, I wanna call it Tupperware, is gonna be utilized for way better goods. We're actually gonna flip it like this and
we're going to be using this as a plate every episode. Every time we're in the fashion bunker, there's going to be treats on this thing. I prepared a little muffin. I'll be using this little baby as a plate, honey. Oh, you best believe. It's the most chic of plate. And I'm not talking about that porcelain stuff that they make. I like the plastic stuff. This makes it look cheap in a good way. I live for this. So when the trick-or-treaters come knocking on my door, I'll be like, they be a trick-or-treat. I'm like, here you go. And they're going to pick a candy. They won't even know what they're picking the candy from. Oh, my God, the magic. This is where it's at. Oh, the cherry pop. <laughs> Some of the cherry poppers can go here as well. <laughs> We pop the cherries. Isn't this gorgeous? So I will be, you will be seeing me from now on, you know, my crop. It's a staple of the fashion bunker. The Frisbee moment, which is a plate, uh, is going to become a staple of the fashion bunker as well. Because this is one of those pieces that I love Hermes for, you know, <laughs> with that huge logo at the bottom. This is so funny. <laughs> Give me your address. I'm coming for trick or treats, a shikma. Right? Is this adorable? So, oh, I just lost the chocolate. Hold on. Um, where did it go? Oh, here. So I'm not saying that. Um, you you can only. I'm not saying that Hermes is only about these whimsical things. But this is how I love Hermes. For me. This is always what's worth buying. These funny, fun pieces that are connected to sports somehow because this house comes from horse riding and leather. But they know what they're doing when it comes to this stuff. Oh, and also let's compare it to Chanel for a second here because you know that Chanel also made a Frisbee uh, this last uh, summer. Yeah, they did. Now, Granted, their Frisbee comes in a special box. Um, it's made out of fiber, uh, carbon fiber, and then it's lacquered. Their Frisbee is also made in France. It has a huge double C on it. Right. It's a Frisbee. Now, this Frisbee is around $180, $200. The Chanel Frisbee is $2,000. I prefer this one. It's more user-friendly. The Chanel one, you don't want to touch it. It looks like a sculpture. Um, and yes... You're right. It can be also a fashion moment. How, you you ask? Don't put it. You could actually literally wear it, you know, you can attach it to your head and create this. Oh, more like that. How elegant. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's a moment, right? Mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So it's a moment. Oh, hold on. Let, let's do a little screenshot moment. I have to take away the text. And there you have it, you guys. That's oddly chic. I'm telling you, you just got to know how to deal with these things. Um, uh, the printing says uh, Hermès Cellier. There you have it. It's um, saddles, Hermès saddles, because, you know, that's what they were born as. Saddle makers for horses, horse riding. Uh, very simple. And Hermès can be this simple and this fun. So, for those of you who tuned in thinking, oh, clickbait, yeah, you thought you were going to get a Bergen or a Kelly. This makes me more happy. <laughs> this is like, this is Hermes to me. It's always been this. Now, if they were to offer me an orange Kelly or an orange Birkin with gold hardware, I might not say no. Or a gold one, brown, I wouldn't say no, but... It's, you know, in this colorway, if I get a Kelly in this color, are you kidding me? Would love it, but doesn't have to. This, on the other hand, you're going to be seeing this in my videos a lot, in the live streams at least, because it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, 
So they did have uh, bags to purchase. They did offer me several bags. So now they offered the garden party. Uh, they had a garden party in a very large size, like this big, but it was like in a beige color, trimmed in leather, a very, very light color, almost like this color. I did not want that. A garden party in full on leather would not, would not have been so bad. Then they had like a beige garden party with yellow trim that was also available. Um, they did have uh, a Lindy, believe it or not. I don't care for the Lindy. So they offered me the Lindy. Um, and what else did they offer me? They offered, they offered me another one. Oh, well, of course they have the classics that you can always, by classics, I don't mean Kelly's and Birkins. I mean, they're horse riding gear bags, you know, the satchel, the one that kind of is in this material and the a lean or lean bag that has a little leather strap going around here and here. They always have those. Those are like not, you know, obviously that one, they don't even have to offer it to you. It's just there. It's always readily available. Um, ah, Jocelyn, are you still watching? Jocelyn's like, ooh, what color, Lindy? So it was a, um, like a lime color, like a, um, a very, very pastel-y, Lime. By lime, you might think it's green, but it's more like yellow, pastel -y yellow lime, uh, it, like a neon -y light pastel yellow. Um, oh, <laughs> you, die, you die in Ferret. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay. I did, were, are, you, are you in the market for a pastel yellow? <laughs> Coco Kitty says, Lindy's are weird. Looks like 4D chess to figure out the handles yeah it, it's complicated but i've seen jesse uh, with her lindy uh, she has a blue one it looks she looks adorable with it and uh like i see the magic of the lindy. it's just not a bag for me um so anyway it was a lot of fun and what was the most cute thing ever um the that young new sales associate you know I, I was talking about oh i love their denim i love their you guys their denim is so good um i love these whimsical pieces right and i kept talking about them and the, i kept talking about the tarot cards i wanted the glycerin soaps but they ran out of the glycerin soaps so i'm going to get the glycerin soaps uh, elsewhere i found somebody else who has them like another boutique that actually does have them so i'm going to get the glycerin soaps probably next week but because I love them for me. Also, they ask me, like, oh, the glycerin soaps, do you have a horse? I'm like, no, I use the glycerin soaps for me. Super funny story. Story for another time. But, and he was so nice. Uh, April says, I want their denim baseball hat. Oh, that's a cute one. I tried that one on as well. It's the same price as this one. But it's um, the visor part here is too curved for my head. So even though I, I tried the biggest size they had, it still wasn't really fitted for me, for my forehead. Uh, I, I do prefer uh, snapback hats that have a straight visor. That one is too rounded for me. So that's why I didn't go for the denim baseball hat. I enjoyed the unboxing. Thank you, Sinisan. So, so kind of you to say that. Um, Comolita says, great MS unboxing. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Miss Molly says, I love the Egyptian, but it doesn't seem to be that popular. It's not that popular. Um, oh, so what the, what the sales associate said uh, at a certain point was, thank you so much for actually being enthusiastic about the brand and knowing so much about it. Since I started working here, I have never encountered yet a client that didn't just want a Birkin, a Kelly, a Constance. Like you're the first client since I started working here that was actually asking me questions about all our other pieces. Nobody ever asks me for that. Nobody ever cares for any of that. And, and I thought that was really sweet of him to say, but also sad in a way because he's been working there like, several months already and like his first impressions of the brand is well people just want those bags and nobody really cares for the other things 
And I thought that was kind of sad. He did add to that. And that was so funny. He's like, but you know, if you do want a Kelly and a Birkin, it can happen, but it's going to take up to a year. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, thank you. That's good to know. But um, I'll, if I'm ever back to this city and this boutique, I will, you know, give me your card and I'll be back with you, but I'll probably be asking you for more of these whimsical pieces. Uh, so it, it was, it was a nice moment. It was a nice moment. And I gave him hope in, in, in his own brand, you know, because he's like, oh, there's people that actually want these other things that we do. And I was like, yeah, there are, there are, there are people like that. <laughs> One of them is me. Um, and, uh, but, uh, so now I'm going to tell you the, the drama that happened in, in the boutique. While I was trying on the hat and the sneakers and, you know, we were kind of playing with the, we were not throwing the Frisbee through the store, but we were kind of playing with it, looking at it. It was kind of a fun moment. We were having a couple of laughs. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, these two guys come in and they asked another sales associate for belts very straight looking guys. They asked her for belts and she's taking them to the corner, the male section where the belts are hanging and they look at them and they, you know, lift them like, Oh, leather belt. How much is it? She says the price and they're like, Oh my God, that's insanely expensive. We're just coming from some outlet store where they saw brands, you know, like Calvin Klein, I don't know whoever else uh, making leather belts for like a hundred bucks or less or 50 bucks uh, outlet prices. And they're like, like, why are your belts like $1,000? <laughs> She's like, well, our belts are handcrafted and um, made with a lot of attention to detail. And they're like, literally looking at the belt, looking at her being like, no, they're not. <laughs> your belts are not worth the money. And she's like, well, then go. She literally told them, well, then go back to the outlet and buy the belts there. They're like, that's besides the point. Your belts are not worth the money. You cannot tell us that these belts are worth the money. Just because they're made in France, they're not worth the money. They kept telling that to her. They humbled the S-H-I-T out of her. And you know what? I was living for it because they were right at the end of the day. Um, they were so right. And she was just like, you know, trying to be like, no, this is worth it. And they're like, no, it's not. No, I'm not saying that the belts should be 50 bucks. But they also shouldn't be over a thousand. So they, yes, Jesus, they read her, to, they read the brand to filth and they were just not having it. You know, you know, when the sales associates start saying, but this is handmade, this is a luxury, you know, when they start to invent reasons why something should cost so much. If I were in her place, I would have simply told them, honey, you're not paying for the quality. You're paying for the name. If you don't want to pay for the name, then go back to go buy another name. That's honest talk. That's direct, honest talk. That's keeping it very real. Then they can say, yeah, but the quality isn't worth a thousand dollars. I'm like, yeah, I know it's not. You're not paying for the quality, Missy. You're paying for the brand. So there's the door. Bye. Or you want to pay for the brand. That's honesty. But to have but to see her try so desperately to find reasons like to convince them, to convince them that the quality of the piece and the quality of the leather was worth that money. And she wasn't winning because they're right. It's not worth the money. That was an amazing moment. It was such a great experience at Hermes. It was a dramatic moment. Then it was a happy moment as well. Oh my gosh. And then when I first entered, they said, oh, you can come and browse and look around, but you don't touch anything until you're allocated a sales associate. And I'm like, okay, girl. I told them I wanted shoes when I first entered. So they directed me to the shoe section. And I said, well, I'm not going to try on the shoes anyway because I need my size first. Duh. So I thought that he meant at the door, you know, don't. At The person at the door was a sister, if you know what I mean. Like, a hysterical one at that. Very unfriendly. So I go to the to the shoe section and I'm just looking at the shoes, waiting until I'm allocated a sales associate. And hats, sweaters, um, scarves, you know, there's a lot of things, belts, and everything is just there. Uh, so I pull out a shirt 
that's hanging there, this little sister runs around the corner. I told you that you're not supposed to touch anything until... I'm like, girl. Girl. So I was about to be like, well, Jason, I did not check her because it's their house, their rules. But I looked at her like, like, are you being serious now? And then she gave me like the, yes, I am being serious. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine. You're just being hysterical, whatever. I, I, I see you've had a hard day. Uh, and then just three minutes, four minutes later, the sales associate was allocated to me. So it was all fine. But then when I was with my bag exiting, uh, the sales associate took me all the way to the, to the, to the door with the bag, very kind, very polite. And of course the sister was there as well at the door. And that's when Jacob elegantly throws his shade the way I do, you know, I don't throw a tantrum, honey. What I do is I ignore you. And that's the worst kind of shade you can throw at a person, but it's the most elegant kind of shade. So there I am at the door talking to this lovely gentleman who, who has been really, really a pleasure to work with. And so he hands me over my huge bag. And this other sister is there, has to open the door. It, by the way, the sister is not security. The sister is just the coordinator of people. And takes me, you know, and we're at the door. So now all three of us are standing at the door. I'm about to exit. So the sister is here. I'm in the middle. The sales associate is here. And I'm now handed, so I look at the sales associate, I'm handed the bag. I turn to the front of the, of, 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 I, I turn towards the exit. The sister over here, I think is expecting me to say something to her, like, you know, goodbye. So I'm just standing there and just for a second, I turn a little bit towards the sister, but I never look at the sister and I never acknowledge the sister. I just, with my bag, I just do. And I turn again to the sales associate and I say, thank you so much for your patience. You were so kind to me. Um, it was really lovely uh, to work with you today. I'm looking forward to coming back again next time I'm in this city. I will definitely come back to see you. And then I just kind of flip a little bit side eye to the thing. And I just walk straight out. Not a goodbye, not a thank you, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and that was like, um, you know, done. She done. She done. Because I, you know, I told the sales associate, you were so nice. You were so kind. You were so patient. It was great to work with you. And then I miss thing and then I leave. Oh my God. <laughs> I love moments like that. Yes, Manjai, Mike, drop. Mike, crop, drop. <laughs> Boy, this unboxing video has turned into a historic epic video. Like we we have these historical, because I'm telling you these pieces, you're going to see them a lot in the Fashion Marker. It, it has turned into a story time video. It has turned into shade video. It has turned into, oh my God, so many things all in one video. Thank you, Hermes. This was fun. I also taught the sales associate what petit H means, the little H. The, he had no clue. So I, I explained to him like how that works. It was so cute. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you for being so patient as well and waiting for this unboxing to happen. I, I hope you, you had fun watching this. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love and subscribe. Bye.